Theodor Meron, I am an appeals judge of ICTR, and as uh, until recently president of the ICTY, I was ex officio presiding judge of the appeals chambers for the ICTY and for the ICTR. Okay. And, and when did you begin your work with the ICTR? In, 19, in 2003. 2003. Can you, can you like set the stage for me? What was the ICTR like? What was the shape of the ICTR? When I joined in 2003 and started periodically coming to Arusha to participate in hearings of uh, ICTR appeal cases, the, the climate, the appearances, the texture did not really change much. What has developed since then is, of course, uh, exponentially the significance and the size of the jurisprudence. But uh, there was no, no drastic change in the image of the court. Did, did you feel like the work that you were being done had precedent, or were you kind of in open, open waters? Well, both, uh, both the ICTY and the ICTR appeals chambers and I'm speaking for appeals chamber because that was my, the focus of my work um, in the court. Uh, they both uh, um, drew on existing law. Our mission is not a legislative one. The Security Council did not give us authority to create new law. But while we could not create new law, we could interpret, explain, and flesh out existing law, and that we did. And um, by so doing, we dealt with questions which until then were dealt with at a very high level of abstraction. We had some skeletal statements in the statutes of the tribunal, but we did not have, unlike the ICC, um, elements of crimes which would help uh, were designed to help judges and the prosecutor to flesh out the, and give a gloss of interpretation to those rules. We had to do it ourselves. And we have to, had to do it very carefully, lest be, we be accused of uh, creating new law, which probably the international community would resent. But having said so, there's no question whatsoever that international criminal law international humanitarian law, as it entered the ICTR appeals process. And, as it, and when it emerged after the cases were decided upon on the appeal level from the ICTR process were quite different um, propositions. You had detailed statements of law dealing with elements, for example, of what crime uh, the crime of genocide constitutes, of what are the requirements to prove that a crime against humanity has been committed, when a crime against humanity was not committed. How do you deal with uh, witnesses in certain situations? How do you, do you ensure fairness of proceedings? Fairness of proceedings, as we all know, was, or the lack of it, or inadequate fairness of proceedings was um, among the main criticism leveled against the Nuremberg and the Tokyo process. So we, our obligation, our desire was to follow the principle of legality in such a way that no one could plausibly argue that he was not on notice that if he commits those acts that he may be prosecuted and convicted. So in terms of contribution to procedure, contribution to evidence, and contribution to the substantive elements of crimes, the role of the ICTR as the role of the ICTY were cardinal. You've worked for quite a while with the ICTR and, and certainly seen it go through a lot of changes. What's, what's motivated you personally to, to stick around? Well, I, uh, I devoted uh, 
quite a, quite a segment of my career to international criminal law, to international humanitarian law. I've worked, uh, for example, with the International Committee of the Red Cross for well pro bono for well over 30 years. Uh, before joining the court, I wrote some of the theoretical work which uh, was helpful in the foundation of the two tribunals. And I'm a person whose uh, career interest and professional interest is international justice. And th if this is your main interest in life, then you are not, uh, then the question, why haven't you left earlier, does not present itself. On the contrary, had I left earlier, you could have said, ask me, since you are committed to international justice, why did you leave? As long as, the, as I'm healthy and uh, can make a contribution, and it's um, in the judgment of my colleagues and peers, I certainly can, there's no reason for me to leave. Are there challenges that you found coming to work with the ICTR that, are, that were specific to, that stand on your mind as being something that, that um, really set the, your experience with the ICTR apart from not really, of course. The travel is always a problem. Um, you spend days and nights on planes, which is no great fun. But um, the judicial experience is not really different from the judicial experience I had in the ICTY and the judicial experience, no doubt, at least partly because it will be a different model but uh, part of that same judicial experience will uh, guide me in my work as president of the newly established tribunal, the mechanism, which, as you know, will handle some of the historical appeals, which um, remain, will remain from the ICTY work, such as uh, the appeal in the case of Mr. Karadzic, if any, and the appeal in the case of Mr. Mladic, even, and so on. Um, and there the structure of the tribunal is different, but the purely judicial experience, how you go about uh, the process of fair trial, is of course universal to all international criminal courts, and I would hope to very many of national courts as well. How do you think history will view the ICTR? I think it would, uh, as I said in my statement to the prosecutors today, that uh, the work of ICTR will go down in history as a great achievement. It's one of the two pioneer courts established after 50 years of inactivity, of impunity following Nuremberg. Like ICTY, the ICTR had to start from the scratch without a building, without telephones, without computers, without paper, you could see, say, without library. And over time, because of the determination of the judges, the prosecutors, um, the presidents, the defense, and the staff, and maybe I should have put the role of the staff uh, higher up, and I think that without the staff, nothing could have happened. This um, the universe of international criminal justice was truly transformed, and um, uh, the fact that following the ICTR and the ICTY, other international criminal tribunals and or hybrid tribunals or national tribunals have been created with the same mission of making sure that accountability will become the norm and not the exception, is something very, very significant for which uh, we owe a great deal of thanks to the ICTR.